but half of you guys are the same people who judge people for how they looked before and then when they get work done after it's too much <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Cameron and I'm back at it again with another video. We're gonna be talking about hypocrisy when it comes to the plastic surgery conversation. Why are we so comfortable judging celebrities' looks and how this manifests into actually adding to the problem that we say that we're trying to fight? I feel like we'll all be able to have more of a productive conversation when we're honest. A lot of what I see on YouTube or videos are in favor of Y'all are doing too much. The plastic surgery is too much. Y'all just need to love yourself. She looks crazy. They look crazy. However, I think a lot of people are not assuming some sort of responsibility for this culture we've created that kind of makes people want to get this stuff done. I've even done a video called Everyone Looks the Same. This was years ago. And so I wanted this video to kind of counteract that or show another perspective. This conflicting message that girls are like, what do I do? Because you're saying not to do it, you're saying to do it, and the same person in the middle is saying both. From people like SZA, Khloe Kardashian, Koyla Ray, Lizzo, Kylie Jenner have always been a topic of conversation when it comes to body image, whether that's physically how your body manifests, whether it was achieved by surgery, how you were naturally born. And I wanna talk about how these celebrities have often been a target. And it highlights the hypocrisy that a lot of us out here have when we have the plastic surgery conversation. Like, comment down below. What are your opinions on this? Subscribe down below. If you guys are new here, hey, what's up? Welcome. If you are a subscriber, I have a new intro that I just introduced at the beginning of this video. I am a video editor as well. So I created all of my intro materials, my outro material, which you'll see if you stick around to the end, and I rebranded my whole channel. So we're here 2023 with a new vibe, a new look. Thanks for watching. And without further ado, let's just get straight into the commentary. As a lot of us know, looks are our social currency in society, especially for women. It's no surprise that many of us are running under the surgeon table or under the knife to keep up to date with the ever-changing expectations of what women are supposed to look like. So today, plastic surgery possibilities are endless from Botox to fillers to lip fillers, chin implants, buckle fat removal, whatever the hell that is, jaw surgery. And many women are trying to keep up, especially celebrity women, which tend to be the punching bags for this plastic surgery conversation. A lot of their careers are based off of their image. So of course they want to look as perfect as possible while they also contribute to some of these harmful stereotypes, right? You're creating and you're making a standard. A lot of these women are judged harshly for partaking and we perceive them as being rewarded for these changes in their appearance, whether they date the finest men, they make money for being attractive and hold a higher status. The reward is men finding them desirable and to no one's surprise, that is not a reward. It's really not. And we're starting to move away from the notion that like men's validation is the end all be all. With that being said, like we're all out here trying to survive. So for some women that's changing their appearance to be more desirable, to quiet the naysayers. For some, they also just do it because they want to. We tell people to embrace their natural selves while in the same breath judging them how they looked prior to plastic surgery, right? Which was probably the impetus for a lot of these people to get the surgery. And it's not like some of us can all be naturally pretty from birth. A lot of us have went through phases like, sorry, we're all not Beyonce, right? So one thing that really bothered me was recently there was uproar over SZA's old looks, but people were calling her ugly, trashing her weight, her acne, and overall appearance. When just some months before, her potential BBL, which we now know she really did get one, was up for question. And everybody was saying she should have never touched herself. I hate how much she changed. Or well, that's months before people had brought up her old pictures. So the same people who were saying earlier that she didn't need surgery are some of the same crowd who are boasting about how ugly she was. So you guys say since it was ugly before and trash her when she has surgery. So it's like, make up your minds. And that's the hypocrisy that I'm trying to highlight today, right? And a lot of the people who are to blame for this are the people in the comment section and the people who sit here and preach body positivity. But half of you guys are the same people who judge people for how they looked before. And then when they get work done after, it's too much. And this is an example of how it's completely inconsistent messaging. And I'm not saying this is everybody. However, I think that this hypocritical thinking seeps into a lot of our 
subconscious and we don't even realize that we're doing it. We'll be like, ooh, she looked crazy. But then in the same breath, you're questioning why she got surgery. Why is it a question? Everybody and their mama sitting up here saying, ooh, she look a mess, she look a mess. So after all of that pressure, what do you think would be a normal reaction for somebody to do? Going into a study, um, and I will link all of my research. This is from a scholarly article. Marky and Marky recently examined young American women's interest in obtaining cosmetic surgery. They found all four factors they investigated, namely body dissatisfaction, physical appearance, teasing, and quote, being teased about 11 different body parts and media influence were related to the desire to have cosmetic surgery. Now, instead of it focusing on mostly the media influence, which is most commonly covered when we talk about the surgery discussion, I'm highlighting the teasing and the shaming part. This is actually a more significant part that people don't take responsibility for. These standards don't just pop out of thin air, y'all. Men and women create these. We uphold them and we project how we feel about ourselves onto other people. We do this with our emotions. We do this with physical appearance. We do this with communication. So it's, it's a natural human thing to do. Commenting on appearance, speculating, and making a spectacle of somebody's face are all factors that I see on the daily that could easily contribute to somebody wanting to get work done, period. I don't care how strong you think you are until you're in that position. I think we need to be a little more empathetic. Now, in this study, Shireen Delinsky found that media exposure predicted greater likelihood of undergoing surgery. However, on the contrary, Amy Brown and others found that media exposure didn't influence the likelihood for undergoing cosmetic surgery, but rather caused awareness to reach its peak. If some of the studies are actually saying media influences aren't as profound and impactful as everybody makes it out to be, those other factors are arguably just as important or maybe even more important than we give it credit for. So it could imply that people's comments on body flaws and projecting their own insecurities are a huge reason as to why there's such an issue with people running under the knife. It's basically like the media brought you to the ledge, right? You hanging off a cliff. The comments from outsiders on your natural appearance causes you to let go of that edge and fall into the abyss, right? It's like the media is the impetus, but it's all of the people in your ears. Like, oh, you don't look good enough. Oh, you should have changed this. And I'm not saying everybody who has plastic surgery does it because there's people in their ear. But I think a lot of celebrities, naturally you have a large audience. You're listening to what people are saying. And people always have shit to say on the internet that they would never say to your face. We often see ourselves in others. So a girl with a similar frame to Lizzo or a similar frame to a Coyle Ray may say, they get all of this hate for their body and I'm built like them too. And actually they're gorgeous girls, they're pretty. And if they're getting teased, maybe something must be wrong with me because they're rich, they have money, they're pretty, their makeup is on point, but we have the same body type. I see myself in her and everybody's saying she needs to fix something. So you have people on the internet seeing all these comments and possibly feeling like now something might be wrong with them because let's face it, we see ourselves in others. We see ourselves represented in others and that makes a huge difference positively and negatively. In one scenario, we get the girl who may change herself due to all of the comments and they might succumb to the peer pressure. But in the other scenario, we get the girl who embraces herself like Lizzo, who's unapologetically herself. She doesn't give a f what people care or think about her. Or you have, again, the Koi Larrays who's like, okay, bitch, I'm skinny. I don't have this, I don't have that, but I'm a bad B and I'm gonna stay that way. So you have those two different outcomes. But remember, the first girl isn't the villain that we make her out to be. And I feel like too much with this plastic surgery conversation, we make the girl who was pushed over the ledge and teased and ridiculed, we make her the villain in the story. And coming from an empathetic point of view, that's not completely fair. If you guys know Kayla Nicole, she's an internet personality. She was at the Grammys and she had just had a baby, but she had this dress that showed her cleavage. And there was a girl who felt the need to basically say she needs a boob job ASAP. And I was really happy to see so many people coming to her defense. Absolutely. And I want to highlight that. And that's the attitude that we need. But there are a large amount of people who are the first to comment, oh, they should get this done and they should get this done. But are you gonna get mad at Kayla and Nicole though if she really did feel like, hey, maybe I, I, I am gonna change myself? Cause then the internet will flip and be like, why did you change yourself, yada, yada, yada. But will you have people ridiculing you? Like, 
What do you think is gonna happen, y'all? Let's talk about women empowerment, feminism, and how this can turn into negativity where women, we weaponize it against each other. Feminism preaches women should be able to act on what we want, act on free will, do what we want, how we want, and when we want. But we flip the script on ourselves. And men tend to also weaponize our weakness, the one that they gave us, which is attractiveness, its looks, its sexuality. In a man, man's perspective, they want natural women, but the girls they fawn after and seemingly entertain on platforms are those who have surgery or are not naturally built that way. Women look at these messages in society from men while simultaneously being told to love yourself, but also being brought down for how you naturally look. It's like nothing is ever really good enough. And where women come in is we take these standards and we internalize them so much to where we start projecting that onto other people. Like, oh, she needs to get this done. Oh, she not popping. Oh, she's ugly. That was created to bring us down in the first place. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? And as women, I think because it impacts us a lot, I think we also have to take responsibility within ourselves for the lashings we participate in. It's like the call is coming from inside the house. I think of it like how with black people, yes, we know that racism, the culprit, are the white people who created these systems. And they definitely should be demonized and held accountable. But there's only so much that we can control from other people. On the inside, it's like with black people, yeah, we need to also look within ourselves. What are we perpetuating? What do we have the power to say, hey, we should change this. We should take back our narrative and control that. But a lot of the times, what do we do? We start fighting each other, hence colorism debate. It's a similar concept. And that's what I'm talking about with women and the whole um, attractiveness and plastic surgery debate, right? The call is coming from inside the house. If you want to empower women, stop judging them so much. One thing i'm about to cop a plea and y'all gonna be like bitch i know you're not about to take it here but yes i am i really want to talk about kylie jenner and i say this story because we demonize women for putting priority to vanity and beauty when that's what we taught women that it was their capital from day one and kylie jenner is a perfect example she grew up in a family of gorgeous women, her sister was Kim Kardashian, a woman who was not praised for how smart she was, is not praised for how talented she was. It was about her sex tape and how gorgeous and beautiful she was. And that's the example that Kendall and Kylie grew up seeing. And so when you're facing your body or your money maker, especially when you see your sisters, their appearance, what do you think that's gonna do to your psyche? Looking at Kylie from her child's view, how is Kylie necessarily the villain in this story? Because I think a lot of the adults in her life failed her, whether it was her teenage relationships or growing up and how she viewed herself because she started getting surgery at a young age. And I'm not about to sit up here and lie and say that I have not judged and I don't still have some things to say. It's a little more nuanced, right? Whether it's the lip situation, like women have been getting teased for having big lips and then her spearheading this trend whether it was her intention or not. And that's not to say that like, you could still be a victim of a system while still negatively contributing to that. And I feel like the Kardashians and the Jenners are a good example, especially a Kylie or a Khloe Kardashian are great examples of that. Well, kind of while we're on the Kardashian topic, Khloe Kardashian is very similar. When the show first came out, Khloe was the fat sister. She wasn't even fat by the way, okay? She was tormented for years about how she looked. And so it's like, she was ugly before, right? That's what people say. But now people are so hung up saying that now she's ugly because she got too much surgery. There's mixed messaging. And this conversation is not to say you're not allowed to have a opinion. Like I do think Chloe has taken it too far. I didn't think Kylie has taken it too far. But am I hung up on it and gonna be in the comment sections telling you how messed up you look now or how you looked before or vice versa? No, you're allowed to have opinions. That's not what I'm saying. But when you spew it and you put that out into the universe and you, you don't expect people to react, it's like we gaslight people, basically. Like you're, you, you gaslight someone into saying for years, you're ugly, you're fat, you have no lips, you look a mess, you're ugly compared to your sisters. But then once they fix themselves, we, on the other hand, the same people are like, ew, she got too much work done. And I know the Kardashians are a very easy target. Like I'm not saying they're the best example because Again, they reinforce the same beauty standards that they claim are so hard to keep up with. They've helped create a lot of what people idealize as beauty right now. But for someone like a Kylie, 
or a Chloe, I mean, they were punching bags. At least Chloe was a punching bag for a very long time, even at the expense or at the hands of your own family. Who could take that for years and come out unscathed? Coit LeRae, when she was first kind of popping, she's built with a very petite frame, right? Very small, similar to like Ariana Grande's body type. And they constantly tell her that she's tiny and built like a boy. But then they steadily shame rappers who get BBLs or butt shots. And this is men and women. Mostly women though on the Coit LeRae front, because I ain't gonna cap. Men do find Coy LeRae very attractive and there's women who like her too, but it's, it's very confusing because if she were to up and get a BBL, people will be upset. She'd be the topic of conversation, just like you treat all these other rap girls who do get butt shots. Like Nicki Minaj, she said that she was very heavily impacted by this rhetoric, hanging out with Lil Wayne, hanging out in a crew of guys. I had ass shots and at that time, you know, Wayne, he always talking about big booties and all. Wayne would have like a new chick in the studio every session. And all I would hear them talking about is big butts. <laughs> and I didn't feel complete or good enough. But that was you telling yourself that and not anyone else saying that to you. No, yeah, and they never told me that. Well, no, I'm lying. I think Wayne, and I think they said stuff sometimes jokingly. Jokingly. But to a young um, girl or up and coming rapper or anything like that, when it's from someone like Lil Wayne, it matters. It was a catalyst for some of her insecurity in that respect. And even if you look at SZA, she did get a BBL. Um, and she did make a subtle but bold response in her new album, SOS, with songs like SOS and Conceited where she basically owned up to saying, yes, I got a new body and a BBL. And basically, what about it? I just got my body done and got no juice about it. And I respected her reaction to that because she genuinely understands that there's nothing she can do to make people happy. And I think the inconsistent messaging comes from the internal struggle most of us face, right? What we would change if we could and what we wouldn't. So yeah, most of it is projection, like I mentioned before. But we do have to take some responsibility as well as the person who's being judged or a public figure, you can't internalize everything and take everything so personally of what people think of us because we can't live life for other people. So it is a double-edged sword. I'm not saying that everybody's absolved and we all have to be kumbaya and be not have opinions, but I want people to be more conscious and aware of how they're portraying their opinions and how they're communicating them because they're very harmful and very disrespectful in a lot of ways. So social media in the nasty business of plastic surgeons. This could be a whole video, but I feel like this ties into the negative connotations and the hypocrisy. So there's been a rise of plastic surgeon influencers and interest in its content. So content that one, either speculates on plastic surgery um, two, gives medical information slash advice on plastic surgery. Three, comedic plastic surgeon TikToks like a Dr. Miami. Or four, the worst, surgeons commenting on what they would recommend for a celebrity to get done. So there was actually a viral video of a plastic surgeon critiquing Natalia Dyer's looks. So if I was Natalia's injector, this is what I would do. We start by treating those masseters, and we all know how much I love treating masseters to help slim the face. Next, I would actually add a little bit of chin filler just to help fill out her chin and make her face more of like a heart shaped. Next, I would add a little bit to the lips. Just a little bit, nothing crazy. All right, let's see what the final product would give us. Ta-da! All right, how do we like my Photoshop skills? Now, obviously, this is the surgeon's job in like real life to find things to fix on people and fix them, right? Give their, their opinions, right? Because some people go to a plastic surgeon's office and are like, Hey, you're looking at me. What do you think could make me prettier? So it might not be malicious. However, they're still up upholding their opinions. Just because you're a plastic surgeon does not mean that you know beauty. So I hate this content because they present their suggestions in such a public way that ends up humiliating people and influencing their audience. And then again, people see themselves in other people and they start looking at themselves and like, oh, what could I change? What could I possibly fix? Doja Cat had a scandal with YouTuber Lori Hill who makes content commenting on alleged surgeries that celebrities have had. And I've watched Lori Hill's content previously and I didn't see a major problem with it. I still don't really hate what she's trying to do with her channel. I think she does try to approach things with care to some extent. And she does say like, this is all pure speculation. But Doja Cat's reaction 
to Lori Hill making a video about the potential plastic surgery she had, put into perspective that you're still discussing real people. You want to sit there in your fucking chair talking about how this girl and that girl and this girl got this and that done? Want to start talking about the way that I look? I don't, I've never done anything to my fucking body. You know the fakest thing about me is my eyelashes, hair, and motherfucking nails. Anyway, this dumb ass bitch talking about I have a fucking rhinoplasty. My nose is the same goddamn nose. Bitch, you used a picture of me with no eyebrows compared to a picture of me with my eyebrows drawn on. But I'm saying the fact that this bitch who is verified is talking about she did get this done. She did do this. I think she did this. Like, yeah, you have this agenda to like normalize plastic surgery, which A, you don't know it's a fact. So you're already getting on the internet just creating spectacle just to create spectacle. But these are real people that you're talking about. And I see both sides, but like, yeah, Doja Cat has every right to be like, girl, why are you making a video about what I might have had done? And actually, I haven't had half the shit or any of the shit that you said I've had done. Meanwhile, you're getting hundreds and thousands of views and people commenting being like oh this makes me feel so much better like i knew she had something done yada 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 and you don't expect the person in question to not be tight about it i get it i understand a lot of content creators they just want people to be upfront, right but is it really the celebrity's responsibility like as a human Human to human, y'all, is it really their responsibility to tell us all of their business? Because some of this stuff are, might be real insecurities for them or they're just living and they don't want to be a role model for everybody. And then lastly, there's an account called Celeb Face and it's on Instagram. And I don't think this page is the worst of the worst. Um, it basically just aims to put like comparison pictures of like what some people look like. Photoshop, touched up, edited, which I think that's very valuable though because a lot of these models on the runway, some of the pictures they post are very different than what they look like. And that's not really what I'm hinting on right now. Like I think over editing is like kind of an issue. And I think it's important like from a media perspective, like advertisements and things like that, that like people know. I'm just, again, in this video, I'm talking about more personal decisions that people are making to physically change themselves. But Celeb Face, um, post these editing fails and like what people really look like close up. I actually think Celeb Face does some things very well, but it does open a conversation and it opens up speculation. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. It kind of opens the floor and the floodgates for people to be like, ugh, they look crazy natural or ooh, they don't really look like this or ooh, look at her skin up close. And it's because people don't handle, again, comment sections with care. They don't handle their opinions with care and, and think about other people. And I do think it is important for women to know what's real and what's fake to some extent. But is it every single celebrity's responsibility who's had surgery to be the poster child of that? Ask yourself that question. Do you feel that way? My last topic, and this is for pure reflection for a lot of you guys watching and something I had to think about was somebody else being ugly boosts your self-esteem. Somebody else needing all of that work, meanwhile, you don't need any. We've all had a phase where we looked a little crazy, okay? Like I would be mortified if some of my old photos were put on display. And I know a lot of people do this with old pictures of like Kylie Jenner or a SZA. And I'm like, if some of my pictures were to come out from high school or middle school, I wouldn't want y'all judging how I look today based off that. And I haven't had any work done. I just, I look different, right? Like you're taking me at like my weakest moment and then using it as a catalyst for how you're judging my looks. And we all are always looking for ways to feel better about ourselves. Now, plastic surgeon, TikToker, Dr. Anthony Yoon, he says, quote, we're led to believe that they just look as good as they do naturally. So it's refreshing when we find out that maybe they're not so natural after all. And this sentiment validates us. And we tend to compare our beauty to others and pull from that information to rank our own. It's kind of just a weird justification complex. Like we're always looking for a reason to be like, they're like this, well, I'm not like this, so I must be doing okay. But at the same time, we have to stop looking at other people to validate ourselves. And that's on both sides. To conclude the video, I just want to encourage all of us to be more critical about our comments towards other people and how our words impact others. As a community, if we really want to get to the root of the problem, we have to be honest with how we contribute. It's very easy for me to sit on this camera and be like, everybody should be natural. Ugh, surgery is 
corrupting our youth and all of this stuff. But how much of that conversation is going to help when no one really wants to look at themselves and be like, yo, yeah, that was kind of rude for me to say. Let's just be a little nicer or more careful with our critique. So that is my video. Like, comment down below. What are your thoughts on this other side of the argument. I would love to chat with you. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this and I will see you guys in my next video.